Well, after going up to 49.5 in November, getting very close to that sort of break-even point of 50, the South African Purchasing Managers Index has slipped back during the month of December to 47.4, 2.1 points. It's a big move. It tends to be quite volatile, but on the other hand, after the encouragement of November, this is not great news. In the studio with me in Cape Town is Ab Abdul Davids, who's the head of research at Cajiso Asset Management. Abdul, thanks for joining us. Um, Pleasure. Yeah, I got, I, I got sort of quite encouraged. I mean, you did sort of temper my enthusiasm last time we spoke and said, right. no, we don't believe it's going to break through 50, but 2.1 points mm -hmm. is quite big. It is quite big, uh, bearing in mind that um, some of the underlying components have been quite volatile. If you look at the bigger impact this time around has been the employment index. And we've uh, cautioned last, uh, last time in November that the employment index, it went above 50, 52 uh, in November but it has been quite volatile. So we saw quite a significant drop off in the employment index and that had the, by far the biggest impact on the overall PMI as well. Well, that's what I don't understand because the last time I spoke about employment was mm. with Loan Sharp from Adcorp. Mm. The Adcorp employment index came out and showed that the South African economy had created, I think it was 12,556 mm. jobs during the month of December. And yet mm. your statistics mm. uh, sort of fly in the face of that. Bearing in mind that we're only looking at the manufacturing sector in South Africa, and uh, I think over that same period, the uh, manufacturing was flat. And for the full year of 2012, we actually said, I think, about 4,000 jobs in the, in the sector as well. So you can so have people creating jobs like the retailers, yes, that's uh, right. hiring uh, during mm. the peak, um, for the peak season, and yet the manufacturers and, and miners mm. shedding jobs, and that's the one that affects the PMI. Unfortunately, we have seen uh, significant layoffs in the mining industry and bearing in the mind that mining services is quite a big component of the manufacturing sector as well. So those companies that service the mining companies uh, that are doing some of the construction related to mining, uh, etc., would have felt the brunt of uh, some of those layoffs as well. This is what you say. You say the sharp decline comes amid bleak employment dynamics within the manufacturing sector and adverse sentiment towards labour following various strikes in the second half of 2012. Now that That's sort right. of suggests that the strikes, mm. I mean, okay, the strikes are still going on, but they're not quite mm. as dramatic and impactful, I don't think, mm. as they were when they were first initiated. So perhaps we can look forward mm. to something a little bit better in January. We, we certainly hope so, but an anecdotally, I think uh, things will probably get worse for the sector, bearing in mind that a lot of companies, especially in the mining sector, they're now undergoing reviews of the operations uh, in the light of uh, significantly higher wage settlements that they've had to settle uh, in the third and fourth quarter of last year. So in the light of that, what we have seen is uh, the use of contractors, for example, by the mining companies decreasing substantially. And unfortunately, a component of our manufacturing sector is, ex is exposed to the contracting sector as well. So I think uh, the second round effects of these high wage settlements and the disruptions will still yet be felt in the manufacturing sector as well. And then, of course, we had the dreadful news yesterday, 14,000 Anglo-American platinum employees mm. are likely to use, lose their jobs and they're hoping to create 14,000 jobs elsewhere. I don't know how a rock driller can suddenly become a builder, though, yes. and start building roads and mm. um, um, low-cost housing and that sort of mm. thing. So I think it's a, it's a lovely mm. sentiment. Mm. But anyway, the 14,000 is going to mean that the employment situation is going to still be under pressure. Let's go on to something a little bit more cheerful now. Mm. Again, I'll quote you here. It says news on the production front was somewhat more encouraging as the business activity index gained 1.4 points to reach 47.3. What's the significance mm. of that? Well, business activity is normally your leading indicator for new sales orders, etc. Uh, so purchasing managers are finding greater interest, for example, maybe uh, inquiries increased uh, in the month of December. Bearing in mind that uh, it is uh, very much sentiment driven, so uh, it could be an indicator of uh, things to come in January and February where you have advanced inquiries uh, during that month as well. So hopefully that will feed through to higher new sales orders uh, in the coming months as well. Mm, the new sales orders is an interesting one because you say despite increased production, demand for manufactured goods mm. remains weak. So they're mm. ramping up production, but mm. orders are, are weak. So that means stockpiles mm. are going to build up. So therefore right. manufacturing activity um, by definition should mm. fall off in the next two to three months. Yeah. What we have seen is that uh, a lot of the production disruptions that we've seen in the third and fourth quarter had to be made up. Uh, so there was a lagged impact in terms of uh, especially activity levels coming through. But as you rightly said, uh, we have seen uh, some drop off in demand. Uh, bearing in mind, again, bring, coming uh, back to the mining sector, 
Uh, the disruptions in the mining sector has meant that we've seen some drop off in terms of orders coming through on that side, and that is now having an effect uh, in terms of uh, activity levels as well. New sales orders, lowest level since August 2009. Mm. So we've, we've, we've gone absolutely nowhere now That's right. uh, for three years, whereas the, the trend in purchasing managers' indexes worldwide has been a stabilization mm. uh, to, to slight recovery. So this is mm. quite disturbing. We're independently weak by the looks of it. It looks like it. Uh, bearing in mind there was a period at the beginning of 2012 where we sort of moved in uh, uh, dissimilar to Europe, for example, where we had a, a, a bigger recovery coming through. So I would argue that uh, for a portion of 2012, <coughs> excuse me, we were operating from a higher base. <coughs> that is now reversed. And unfortunately, the impacts of South African manufacturing is being impacted by uh, domestic issues, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. this is also decoupling us from the rest of Europe. Bearing in mind, Europe has stabilized, but it is still below 50 as well. So they're still firmly in contraction mode uh, in Europe as well. And that doesn't help our manufacturing sector, of course, because it's one of our biggest, if not our biggest, um, uh, trading partner. What That's about right. prices? Prices mm -hmm. pay. There's a big debate yeah. going on at the moment as to whether South African inflation is going to shoot through the 6% level, <coughs> uh, the 3 to 6%, of course, being yeah. the South African Reserve Bank's target mm -hmm. ban. Some people are saying, well, with the RAND at 886, yes, of course it's going to do mm -hmm. that. On the other hand, people say, with weak demand in the mm -hmm. economy and job losses coming through, and inflation mm -hmm. will be kept in mm -hmm. check. What do you? What did the latest figures yeah. show? We've seen prices uh, stabilizing, but they are at elevated levels still. They're close to the 80 level. And that indicates to us that uh, raw material inputs that goes into the sector is still fairly pricey. Uh, if you look at uh, oil prices, diesel prices, they're still fairly elevated. And with the weaker currency, uh, estimates are between 40 and 50 percent of our raw materials are imported. So with the weaker currency, that has a negative impact on uh, inputs into the sector as well. So we're likely to see the price index uh, uh, potentially even going higher, but definitely not coming down significantly in the coming months. What are you going to call the next uh, figure to be? Now, that's, that's unfair. <laughs> let's let's yeah. call it a quarter. I think mm. over the fourth quarter, yes. we had an average of 48 for the yeah. PMI. What yeah. would be the average, do you think, for the PMI over the mm. first quarter of 2013? I would hazard to say between 40 and 49.5 because, uh, sorry, 48 and 49.5. Uh, given that we've seen the trend in 2012, we started the first quarter in 2012 at 55, second quarter was about 51, uh, third quarter 50. So the trend has been negative. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that the leading indicators also still firmly in a bearish mode, uh, I think uh, for January de uh, definitely we'll probably see another, another number below 50 as well. Okay, well, let's, let's hope you're wrong, but I'm sure you're going to be right, actually, Abdul. Thanks very much for coming you, this lunchtime. That's Abdul Davis, who is the head of research at Cajiso Asset Management based in Cape Town.